Hello, my name is Miles. I work in technical marketing here at VMware, and I'm going to give you a quick overview of the data persistence platform that we've built on top of vSphere with Tanzu. So as you can see, I've got a vSphere with Tanzu cluster here, which, which has got two namespaces, a Minio namespace and my own namespace. And you can see here that I've got a number of services available for, uh, to me. So these are at the cluster level in configure and at the bottom under supervisor services. So you can see I've already got Minio enabled. The Valero one is sitting at disabled at the minute and as is Cloudian. So just to show you how you deploy one of these services, we'll click on Cloudian here. We'll hit enable. We'll be given a bunch of options. So the version of the operator currently, there's only version one. And then if we have an internal registry, we fill that information in here. I do have an internal registry, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill in that information so that we can get this deployed. And we'll click next and we'll agree to the terms and we'll click finish. Now, what you'll see happen is on the left-hand side here, there it is, uh, a namespace has been created in vSphere with Tanzu for HyperStore itself. And that's gonna deploy the Cloudian operator inside of the HyperStore uh, namespace. That will allow us to spin up instances of that given service. Likewise with Minio, if I uh, expand the Minio one out here, you can see that it's got the vSphere controller, a couple of UI nodes, and then the operator itself. So this is basically where the services deploy their bits and pieces that help make them work with vSphere with Tanzu. So you can see here it says, the plugin has been successfully deployed, let's refresh our browser. So let's go ahead and refresh our browser. And now you can see that we have this Cloudian Hyperstore service enabled to us. So you'll notice that we've got Minio and Cloudian enabled here at the moment. And if we scroll down into configure here, you can see that we've got new UI elements for Minio and Cloudian Hyperstore directly inside the vSphere UI. So if I click overview, we'll get an overview of our Hyperstore uh, deployment, our Hyperstore instances. At the minute, we'll see that it says there are no instances currently available. Same with Minio. So if I go into our tenants in Minio, you'll note that there are no tenants. So let's, let's add one here. Let's use this vSphere with Tanzu Miles namespace and deploy an instance of Minio into that. So we're gonna hit add here. This will bring up a new modal that lets us put in all the information that we want to about Minio itself. So it's asking us for a name for this tenant. So we're gonna choose uh, Minio backups because we're gonna use this one for backups. And then what namespace do we wanna deploy it into? So we're gonna deploy it into Miles namespace 01. That I'll do some pre-checks and say, okay, which storage class would you like to use? And I'm gonna use this Minio vSAN Direct Thick. If you want more information on vSAN Direct or vSAN SNA mode, have a look at the blog associated with this video. So we're gonna click advanced mode here again, cause I need to put in a, a custom image for this cause I'm deploying from an internal registry. More often than not, you wouldn't have to do this. So we'll click advanced mode, we'll hit next. We'll click use custom image and you can see it's pre-populated by default. So if I don't choose anything, it will just use these instances. Um, I am gonna put in my own special images because like I said, I'm deploying from an internal registry here. So we'll copy that, we'll paste it in, we'll click next. Do you want any identity provider, external identity provider, either open ID or active directory? Do you want to automatically create a cert for this or do you wanna create a custom cert? Do you want to enable server-side encryption? This is obviously on Minio because the point of the data persistence platform is we let the application do all of the data services itself. So we can enable that here. Tenant size, I'm going to change this to four nodes. And you'll note that there are five nodes in the cluster and you can only have a single node uh, of Minio per node in the cluster. And that's because they're anti-affinitized. Additionally, it's telling me there's not enough space. So I'm going to change this to 50 and we'll drop it from gigabytes terabytes to gigabytes. And we'll just change the RAM footprint here to make it deploy a little bit quicker. And then you can see uh, there's a Razor code parity in here as well. This is a Minio specific setting. So if you want more information on that, have a look at Minio's documentation. But at the end, we get a nice printout telling us how many volumes there's gonna be created per node, what size they are, the total number of volumes, the raw capacity, and what is usable. Likewise, if we change these, you'll note that the usable capacity changes. So this is essentially changing the parity bits that are being created uh, inside Minio itself. So we'll click next. Here's a preview of the configuration. We'll go ahead and we'll click create and it'll give us the credentials to actually access that service. So I'm gonna click the copy credentials button here and click finish. And I'm gonna paste those somewhere for use later on. Now, if I go over to the Miles namespace 01, 
what we should see is an instance of Minio starting to spin up inside that namespace. You can see that the console is now up and running as well. So if we go back to our cluster level here, and we go into our Minio tenants again, you can see that we now have our Minio tenant. So if I click on that and we go to details, you can see it gives us the Minio endpoint IP, which is how we actually access that S3 object service. And we have the console IP, which is the IP address to manage that Minio instance itself. Additionally, if we can go, if we go into health, you can see what server instances are available and what volumes are currently available and bound. So if we pick one of these, say we'll pick the Minio endpoint and we'll open that up and we go in here, we'll accept this because we asked it to create a self-signed certificate for us. We'll accept the risk and continue. And we're gonna use the access key and secret that we were given during the install. So I'm just gonna paste those in now. I've kept them just in a note at the side here and we paste them in. You can see we have a Minio instance. So if I go in here, we create a bucket. We'll just call it Valero, for example, for backups. Then we have an, uh, a bucket created with the name of Valero and we can either add folders or upload items into here. So if I choose upload file, we just pick an example PDF, we click open. You can see that that file is now uploading into that S3 object store. So that's a quick overview of vSphere with Tanzu's data persistence platform feature. Be sure to check out the other video on failure and maintenance mode handling inside the feature as well.